Hey everyone. All right. So I see we've got John on and John on and Jeff and Rick and uh, a couple others as well. So we are we are about to start. Um, and uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited. We're going to be playing with some new tools today as far as uh, equipment and camera angles. So hopefully everything goes well. If it doesn't, bear with me. This is an ever learning process. Every week is new. And so, okay, we just hit 6.30. And uh, so tonight we are gonna be tying the curly tail critter bug. So this is a, uh, this is a fun one. Um, very, very effective pattern. Actually is an, an inverted pattern. So it's gonna swim upside down like this. And um, something that, that has a really kind of neat profile to it. You know, when we look down the fly, uh, what, we, what we'll see is, hang on, switch camera angle. Something where the, the legs are really kind of sticking out and, and making just a really neat shape for, you know, fish to go after. So, so for this, we're gonna need some, some basic supplies now. I know for some of you, um, you have a, a little plastic box uh, that came in your kit with a bunch of different things inside of it. So specifically for your hooks, if you find a bag that looks like this, um, there will be hooks inside of it. And those hooks are what we are going to be using today. So those are your number four. Now for those of you who may not have one of uh, these kits, basically what we're looking for is a, a 3 or 4x long streamer hook. Right, it could be the same hooks that you use for your woolly buggers, and you can tie them in multiple different sizes. Now tonight we're really focusing on a size four. It's a little bit of a smaller on the, the curly tail bug pattern, but uh, it's something that is incredibly effective for smallmouth trout, you know, at this size. So it's as good overall, I think, size for it. Uh, and it's also gonna be something that you could throw on a five weight rod. It, it, it'll be a little bit challenging because it, it does have some large dumbbell eyes, but it is something that you could throw, especially at the distances that you would need to throw this bug, you know, 30, 40, 45 feet. Um, but, uh, but obviously if you've got a six weight or a seven, um, it's gonna be that much easier and, and less effort to throw it. And that's one of the reasons why we're tying it a little bit smaller. So the other things that we're gonna need is we're gonna need some rubber legs. So, and when we do rubber legs with these types of patterns, we're using a sheet of uh, rubber legs that we're going to then separate out. Now, this I'm actually using is, is a medium rubber leg. Uh, the pattern works better if you can find large round rubber legs in, in those sheets. I, I just happen not to have any. Uh, I, there's none included in the kits that we handed out either, uh, but the mediums work just fine. Basically, the, the main difference is if you have the large rubber legs, when you strip it, they won't be as bendy. So they're gonna push back through the water more easily, It'll be a lot more rigid, um, which is you know something that, that's kind of cool, right? When we look down, down this fly, <clears throat> we'll see you know lots of movement that, that is occurring. Let me grab the, the bodkin. Lots of movement that's going to be happening um, from all of these different legs interacting with the water. So the round, larger round rubber legs just kind of accentuate that and, and make that something that is that much better. Um, but that's fine. So uh, we're gonna use medium. Medium works just as, you know, not as well, but totally works for this pattern, it's fine. The other thing we wanna do is we wanna use uh, chenille. And, and for us, we're tying in black tonight, so we wanna use black chenille, this is medium which is plenty thick and, and actually we'll show you how to build up a body to make it thicker. If you have large, you just have to use less wraps. Now for my chenille, and I know some of you guys have seen this, uh, the way that I, I kind of prepare my chenille, but you know, I'll go ahead and I'll show it. What I do is I cut a strip all the way down the edge. And what this allows you to do is take a section out and then it hangs and that's not going to come off so instead you know these packs of chenille come with this this normal cut up here if I do that and I'm working with it it will potentially pull out and then start unraveling on you 
So I always do that horizontal cut on all my packs just to make it easier. And so the um, last thing that we need, sorry, uh, two things left. Um, we need a, this is a, a little curly tail. Now these come in, uh, you're going to be looking for this pack, right? And this specifically is a, a um, curly tail number four, and again in black. Um, the reason why we're using these specific tails is this is a, uh, so for those of you who are watching, not from the Charlottesville area or not from the Virginia region and aren't familiar with kind of Chuck Craft's patterns, so he was introduced to a type of furniture upholstery. Let me um, move over to make it where you guys can see this a little bit closer. And, and this material here is what's known as ultra suede. So it has the same flexibility when it's wet as it does when it's dry. And that's not very common in materials, right? Think of paper. Paper has completely different properties, wet versus dry. But ultra suede has the same strength, has the same general movement. Uh, and so, you know, he started tying a lot of his patterns with, with this particular material. And this is laser cut for those patterns. So it's just easier to go ahead and pick up um, one, of, uh, one of these packs um, just to save yourself a lot of effort. Now, if you want, you can buy ultra suede and cut your own, especially if you're gonna make a really large pattern or you're gonna make a really small pattern that's not offered and that's something that, that you can do. Um, and the last thing, that we need is uh, our, our, our dumbbell eyes, right? So for the, all right, there we go. So for the dumbbell eyes, I'm using um, lead eyes. You know, lead free is, is my preferred. I just uh, ran out of my lead free eyes, so I'm using lead. Um, lead is always heavier unless you can find tungsten. And it's quite hard actually to find tungsten Dumbbell eyes. I found them and then subsequently lost them where I have no idea where they are. But um, but lead eyes are a little bit heavier than uh, than the, the non-lead. I just happen to not like to use lead unless I absolutely have to. Um, and you can see here I'm going to be using, these are our, our brown, um, which is fine. I've got some others as well that actually when we look at the, uh, the fly, so these are a, um, a black dumbbell eye with uh, like a green chartreuse highlight already painted in. So, you know, that I think looks really, really cool. I just want to tie one in, in brown eyes um, in addition. And so that's it. So, you know, as long as you have those materials, you should be able to follow us along. Now, for those of you who don't have one of these tails, uh, you might be saying, well, I'm excluded. How, um, how can I, you know, go ahead and tie this pattern? Well, what we're trying to do is have something that flutters in the water. It's actually gonna pull back and it's gonna flutter like this. So you can substitute this tail material with a number of different things. You could use like a, a, a zonker or you know a squirrel or rabbit strip. You could use bucktail. Bucktail's not gonna give you the same type of action as a, as a, a zonker, um, but it will provide a tail. You could also use, uh, let's see here, I had some uh, marabou. So if you wanted, you could do a marabou tail, which will put tons of action and movement. May not exactly give you the same type of, of flutter that um, even a zonker strip could do, but it will still give you a, a different option for tail material. So if you don't have, you know, one of these ultra suede tails, you know, you can still tie this pattern using uh, a slightly different tail material, and it won't really change the way that this fly is tied. Um, oh, I did forget one last material, right? And this is optional. You don't need to put in some hair. This is um, calf tail, but bucktail works just as well. And, uh, and again, I have it in black. Um, I think everyone in their kit, you have some black. If you don't, you can use a different color. And this is, like I said, is fully optional. This is just here, uh, kind of makes, not a full weed guard, but it, it has a little stiffness to it uh, to kind of hide that, that hook point. Um, but without it, you still have a very fishable fly. Okay, so let's get down to it. That's enough talking about the different materials that we need. So, let's pull that fly out. Let's go ahead and put in our hook. Now, I've already taken the barb off of this hook, so it is ready to go for me. And, uh, 
I did forget to mention thread. This is uh, a black UTC 210. I just want to use strong thread here, and I can really use any any type of thread um, that I want. But uh, you know, I'm going to use black because that's just the coloration. Uh, I know the guys with the kits; they've got red. Red will work just fine. In fact, we're going to hide most of this thread by the time we're done anyway, so it won't make that much of a difference. So if you notice, I've started farther back along this hook. I've actually started. Uh, almost just in front of this hook point because I'm going to work back here and then I'll, I'll go ahead and move up here. I just didn't want to put down the thread base all the way. So I've put that in and I'm just bringing this thread back to where that barb of the hook used to be. And that's that's where, so on these hooks, that's where the, um, the bend of the hook starts. I don't want to tie back down this bend. I just want to tie right up to that, that point and uh, have my thread waiting there. So now we're ready for me to come in with the, the ultra suede tail. Um, so for, for this thing, there's a couple different ways that we can tie it on. We can tie it on directly like this. Uh, we can try to tie it on directly like this. Um, what ends up happening is because this material is kind of flat and then real narrow, if you tie it in that way, you need to tie it in on the front of the hook, or not front, I apologize, on the side of the hook. So for you, it looks like the front, um, just because you're at that angle. Uh, or the way that uh, this fly was actually tied. And this works really well for your fly box is you can tie it in on its side at an angle. Uh, and this way you don't actually have to fight the material wanting to flip over the hook. But the one thing we do need to do is kind of trim this a bit. So what we're, what we're looking to do is have it, so when we look down the, the profile of this, it starts getting thick back here and then it's, it's tapering real thin all the way up here. And so we want to be tying in almost right behind, just right behind where this um, tail comes down. So about that point, again, we're gonna be tying on its side, but uh, I don't need to be tying material all the way up to the front of my hook. So I'm actually gonna cut some of this material off just to make it easier for myself. So, you know, if I kind of line it up, I can just come in here and just cut this section off. Just make it easier. Get rid of some of that excess. And so now that's much easier for me to tie in. So I'm going to go ahead, lay it down on its side. Just kind of hold it in place. And I'm going to put like two, three loose wraps. And those loose wraps allow me to make sure that this thing's sitting where I want it to sit. If I you know, need to pull it back, now I can. Um, or, or if I want to pull it forward, I can. Um, but I, I've got it about where I want it to, to be. Well, it was until I started messing with it to show you guys. But um, now notice, when I grabbed that thread and I pulled it, see how it's, it's now flipping around the hook? That's why I always talk about putting pressure when you pull up. And I know I've shown this a few times, but it's really apparent here. So if I do one, two, three, and rather than pulling down, if I pull up, see how it doesn't like rotate around that hook? That's, uh, that's why we always pull on the upstroke. So, and we're just gonna go ahead and lay down a thread all the way up. If you need to do what I'm doing and grabbing it, you can until we've captured that tail in. So now that tail is in place, and we can go ahead and come back and it is very unlikely anything is going to be able to pull this, this tail out of place. So it is, it is locked in. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to tie in our chenille. But we don't want to um, start wrapping it. So, so we're just going to tie it into place. Now like all of our chenille, what we do is we come in here, we pull off just a, a small section of it so that we expose these threads, put that down over top, start laying in our thread wraps. Just be mindful, you don't wanna come in and, and accidentally trap that tail, although that'll be pretty hard. It's, it's pretty, pretty stiff material. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and wrap forward just a bit. So I've got the chenille in place, and now I'm ready to start tying in my legs. We're gonna tie in the legs first, and then we're going to do the chenille afterwards. 
So, hey D Red, I saw you just popped in. Uh, welcome. And uh, we are we are tying a fun little pattern called a curly tail critter bug. All right, so let's let's switch over real quick and and start looking at our rubber legs. So we have a sheet of rubber legs that come out, right? Now the easiest way that I found, we want three strands. Hang on. Three strands of rubber legs. So the easiest way that I found to do this is you actually take your bodkin, you'll come in and you'll count one, two, three, and you'll separate it that way and you pull off a section. Now, for me, what I, what I did, and, and you know, you don't have to do this, um, but I knew that I was going to be tying a few of these. So I went ahead and I pulled off a strip. So you can see this is, if we count them, there's uh, one, two, three strands on uh, this section. And of course, it's a, it's a long section. So I can just tie off of this, cut and keep going. And so I can, you know, kind of crank these flies out. So what we're going to do is we're going to angle these back and we're going to have them along the side of the hook, right? So I'm, the length I want is where these legs are coming just into the interior of the tail. So this, there's, you know, this interior curvature of this tail. These legs are about as long as that interior curvature and I'm tying pretty much where I, I had started my thread. It's one of the reasons why I started my thread where I did, just because it gave me a good logical viewpoint, right? But it's really being tied where this tail, just in front of the outer curve on the hook, to where they're as long as the inner curve on the tail. Kind of gives you a visual reference point. So once you have the legs where you want them, you come in, pinch it with your left hand. Now this is where my fat fingers kind of get in the way a little bit. Um, but you go ahead and you put, again, about maybe two or three loose wraps. And I'm doing loose wraps so that I can come back in and pull these back up horizontal. And then I'm going to pull on that upstroke. And you can see how those legs really got pinched in when I did that. Um, well, you may not be able to, but let me, let me move. Now you can see how they're pinched in, and I did that on the upstroke. And again, they're not going to roll when you're putting your pressure coming up, but if I put pressure coming down, they'd roll underneath. So I'm going to put about five or six wraps in tension. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip these over at an angle. So let me... Let me switch real quick so you can kind of look down the shank of the hook. And so what we're doing is we're taking these legs over at a diagonal, right? So it'll be a little hard to see because this camera is not focusing correctly. There we go. So they're coming over at an angle. That's what we're trying to achieve. And so once we've done that, then we're going to start capturing. And we're just going to do two or three just to capture that curve. And then I'm going to start manipulating these because what I'm trying to get to is where they're coming back off at an angle on their own. So once I kind of have that, and I, I did about three wraps with medium tension. Now I'm going to go ahead and start putting down more wraps. And I'm going to be focusing on trapping this section here. So I'm not wrapping back, I'm just wrapping forward to make sure that these are captured in place. So let me do that real quick. And it doesn't need to be perfect. Don't worry about, you know, bumps or anything like that because you're gonna end up having your chenille cover this. So now that I have that in place, what I want to do uh, is go ahead and trim these to the same length as the other legs. Easiest way I found to do that is kind of pinch them together, 
pull them up. So I'll kind of show you at this angle. And then once you kind of have that marked, then you can come in and trim those out. And so it should result into where you kind of have two legs kind of sticking out from one another. And they're gonna be, if we switch where we're looking down the, the shank of the hook, you can kind of see how they're both flaring out. Uh, and, and so that's kind of what, what you're looking for and that's how you get that, that kind of nice shape. Don't pull these apart just yet. It'll make uh, wrapping your chenille a lot harder. We want to keep these together and the last step will be to, to actually pull those legs apart. Okay, so now that we have the back legs in, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna advance our thread and we're gonna switch tactics for a minute and we're gonna put in our dumbbell eyes. So we're kind of tying the tail in, tail materials in, getting ready, getting ready. Uh, and then we're gonna tie in the dumbbell eyes. Then we'll tie in our um, front legs and then we'll do the, the chenille. So for the dumbbell eyes, we're gonna be tying these very close to the eye of the hook. So what I, what I generally do for these, if, I, if I'm not sure, I'll actually put the dumbbell eyes up and then I'll kind of mark right behind the dumbbell eye. And that's actually where my thread is. I've tied enough of these that I'm, I'm quite familiar with, with where the end point is. But let me show you again. So if you put dumbbell eyes up, right behind those dumbbell eyes is where you're gonna put in your thread bump because your dumbbell eyes are gonna be right behind that. So you can see now I have a bump of thread and when the eyes go in place, they're gonna be about one dumbbell eye length behind. That, by the way, is um, the way that you tie in eyes for the Crelex, the Critter Mite, the Claw Dad, uh, a number of different patterns. A lot of Chuck's flies have the uh, dumbbell eyes very close to the eye of the hook in that way. So that's, um, and that's the way that you can kind of measure it and, and always kind of find that logical point. So to make this stick better, this is totally optional. Uh, you, you can just put a little dab of super glue in place. It would not be a truck craft fly if we did not have super glue. And so I gotta make sure I put it in somewhere, right? All right, so now the next part, this is the way that I always do my eyes, is I put one wrapper thread around the dumbbell eye. Right, so I take my dumbbell eyes, put it on my thread, put one wrap around, and that allows me to guide those eyes right in place. Of course, I'm trying to show you on a camera angle and it pops right off. So, let's do that again. There we go. All right, I'm not gonna let go this time. Um, so, the eyes are gonna come in at an angle and you're gonna be wrapping across at an angle. So, what I'm doing is I'm coming across. Well, that, that, is, that is not the angle to show this. Sorry, guys. So I'm actually wrapping forward and across the back. So you may not be able to actually tell what I'm doing. I'll do it, I'll do it over here. Forward and across the back, right? And I put, oh, I put it probably about 10. Probably put more than I needed to. Um, and it results in the eyes that become real skewed once you've done that. And, and you guys have seen me do this before. We're gonna come around the other side and we're gonna start pulling dumbbell eyes with our thread. Now you can do it where you just pull with a thread, but I actually find that if you twist the eyes a little bit, so what I'm doing is I'm actually coming in, grabbing those eyes and pushing them, and that helps them to become straight. So let's keep going. And I usually put enough in so that the eyes are kind of straight along that hook shank. After we've done that, we're gonna start doing underneath wraps, right? So I'm coming behind the eye, underneath, behind the eye, underneath, and I'm just gonna put in about 10 of those wraps or so. That really helps to lock these in place. And we wanna use strong thread for this. You can see I'm actually bending that hook shank because I really wanna put pressure in here to keep it so these eyes kind of get locked in place and really don't move. And that super glue helps with that as well. See that super glue now has really been pushed all through that thread. It's really gonna lock into place. 
All right. So now that we've done that, we can come back slightly to where we're behind those eyes and we're, we're gonna go ahead and put in our next set of legs. Now the last legs that we put in came in at an angle going back. This time we're gonna put them at an angle going forward. And so they'll, they'll kind of be tied in uh, the opposite of the way that we did it before. So, easy way to kind of figure out how long these should be. They should be about the same length as the back legs. If you don't have a pattern, so, so Chuck always has these little cards where, actually, hang on, I'll, I'll grab them real quick. So I've got, here we go. So he would always have these cards. And of course, you can't read it. There we go. Um, just because the, uh, the light is so bright. Let me, let me switch. That way, this isn't in direct light. It'll be easier to see. So we have these cards. And this is actually for the Claudette. This is for a size 4 Claudette. It would literally tell you six wraps or um, six things of, uh, of legs on one side of the fly, seven on the other. Um, and it would have a, a, a line. It would tell him exactly how long it needed to be. So he would always make these uh, cards so that he would have his legs at the exact same length for every fly. So what he would do for, for this fly is he would have some length configured. Um, obviously this isn't the right one because this is for a claw dad. And then he would be able to know, okay, this is how long it's going to be. But because we don't have one of those cards for a critter mite, what we can do instead is kind of just measure the front legs so that they're the same length as the back. So I'm kind of measuring by eye and I say, okay, that's about the same length. I now have this section here needs to be what's in the, the front of the fly. So I'm going to flip that around and tie that in at that point. I'm going to do three loose wraps because it's kind of hard to do this right because of those dumbbell eyes. So we do the three loose wraps so that I can kind of pull this right where I want it and I'll kind of lock it in place. And then put in a couple of wraps. Again, just trying to trying to manipulate it. Alright, and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do the same thing that we did before. Remember we come across at that one angle. And we go ahead and, and we put just a couple wraps to secure. Do about three. And do another one right there. Just so that I've got, got these in place. Okay. And then I'll go ahead and I'll start cinching in. Those were my, my looser wraps. Two, three, four. Now, you notice how these, um, it's actually starting to wrap around my, uh, my thread and everything like that. One of the things you can do just to make that easier, especially if you've done what I've done, you've actually pulled a, a full three things off, is um, you can go ahead and, and measure these out. So I'm, I'm folding them back with no tension just to make sure I have the same length. I can let go of the other legs and then cut these to length. And that's going to make this so much more manageable. Right, so I can pull these back into place. And I don't have to worry about them wrapping around my thread. And I'm going to go ahead and start cinching these into place. And the chenille is going to help lock these more into place as well. All right. So they're locked in in the back. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to come in front very carefully. We have to do this nice and slow because thread wants to capture. We're going to put a couple wraps in front of the eyes. And I'm going to leave my thread right there. So my thread is in between, if I'm a bodkin, in between the rubber legs and the dumbbell eyes. 
that is um, where my, my thread is and I'm going to let it sit there and now I'm ready to go ahead and start wrapping my chenille. So, alright. So when we wrap our chenille in place, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do this real carefully and I won't use the rotary function on my vise, although trust me that makes it easier. We're just going to start wrapping these one wrap at a time. Coming forward, we're doing a single layer and what we're aiming to get to is right up against these rubber legs. And you got to take your time on this part, right, because your chenille is going to want to attack your thread, it's going to want to attack your legs, so it's a little bit awkward and clumsy, but, you know, it'll get there. And so we do this one at a time. And so now I've got my chenille to where it's kind of right up against those legs. Um, so, so John, I haven't missed the weed guard hair yet. I want to be able to wrap my chenille all the way in and then I'm going to pause my chenille at a certain point before I tie in that weed guard hair. Because if I put in that hair now, I'll never be able to actually wrap in that chenille uh, without trapping a whole bunch of the hair. So good question. But um, that's one of the last things that we tie in. So, all right, so I have a single layer on the, the body coming forward, but these are really meant to be flies that are, are you know, kind of meaty for a fish. So we're actually gonna wrap back to the tail. And then wrap forward again. Now, be careful, when you wrap back the uh, chenille is going to want to slip back behind that and start slipping down the hook shank. So just, just be careful, take your time, um, and you, you can get it to where it, it, it comes back forward and doesn't uh, create a pain. So we're going to wrap forward. And so now we actually have about you know two and a half or three layers of chenille, and we have a much more thicker bodied fly. And uh, so if you have large chenille, it'll make that easier. But you can see with medium chenille, we can make it work. And so, you know, the, there's really no need to go out and buy separate chenille for this fly, since most flies are tied with, with medium and, and not too many are tied with large. So what we're doing now is we're working forward, right? We're doing that single wrap all the way forward. Coming up, gonna get right up against these legs again. And once we get up against them, I'm not coming up too much, right? I'm trying to keep these natural angles in place. So, and I uh, want to make sure, that, yeah, uh, I'm trying to keep these, these, I'm not going too up, uh, too far up. I'm trying not to, to mess with the legs. Uh, so, you know, just going up to where they touch. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and I'll wrap back. Just need to give myself a little bit more room on my chenille. Super easy to do. And now I'll, I'll, I'll wrap forward. Trying to keep the um, bodies of the fly pretty, pretty even. So once I get up to here, I'm going to go ahead and put a single wrap in front of the dumbbell eyes. And then I'll go ahead and I'll trap that with two wraps behind with my thread. And then a wrap back in front. So now that chenille is kind of trapped in place, it's not going to come undone on me. Because now we're ready, as, as John has already alluded to, now we're ready for that kind of weed guard here. And so um, easy for me, I get to use my rotary function and, and just invert my, my vise. Um, but, you know, if you are using a vise that you can't do that with, just pop it out and, and flip it over and put it back in. So, we have different options for our hair, right? We have uh, bucktail and then we have uh, calf tail. 
Um, you could even use a, uh, there's a squirrel tail hair. Um, I actually, I think the original version was tied with uh, calf tail, but it may not have been. Um, Jeff, you might know that better than me. Uh, I, I, I don't know what the original hair was for this fly, but I do know that, that calf tail works well, um, or bucktail. Bucktail works very well uh, as well. So if you use bucktail for this, and we'll, we'll tie this one with bucktail. Um, this one was tied with, with calf tail, uh, but we'll use bucktail because I know that's what most of us have. Not a lot of us have uh, just different colored sections of um, calf tail lying around. What I'm looking for is just enough, and I'm really looking at the tips just enough that it's going to kind of cover well. And I think this is a pretty pretty good bundle for that. So even though I'm only going to be tying with the tips on this, I do want to trim as close as I can. And I know this uh, material I'm, I'm using looks a little strange. This is bucktail. Um, this is the tip of a bucktail that broke off. And so I just, it's super, super convenient. Um, so for this, we're going to have a whole bunch of shorts, so we're going to pull out the shorts. Let me actually switch for you guys so you can see better. So I pulled out the short fibers, but it's still too long. And I have a problem where I have a whole bunch of really long, wispy sections. Uh, so I want to actually grab the bucktail up by the tips and pull those out. And this is, and I've shown you guys this before, this is kind of hand stacking your bucktail. So you can come back in, I do this two or three times. What I'm trying to do is get it to where this bundle is a lot more even on that front section. So you can see how now a lot more of those tips are aligned. So when I come back in, I'm going to have a much more even coverage around that hook point. So hopefully that makes sense. All right, so for this, now I have to find out the length that I need. And I'm looking for enough hair that it kind of sticks past that hook point, right? I'm not looking to go super crazy far back because I'm going to start interfering with this tail but I'm not looking to be too far short because that kind of, you know, mitigates the, uh, the point of, of putting this in. So, you know, this is where the tips are kind of coming back to the bend of the hook. Um, and that, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mark that position with my left hand. And that allows me to come in and cut these fibers off. Right here. So now I'm ready, I just put these butt ends down in place. My thread is right, right up where I need it. If it, you know, it's behind the eyes, but it's actually ready to capture and come down in front. And that's why we stopped the thread right where we did. So we kind of put these tips down in place. I'm holding them at an angle. Same thing that we would pretty much do for uh, a clouser. If your thread's doing what it's doing to me, push it back in between your fingers. So, this is hard to see on this angle. So what we're doing is I, I have trapped the thread between my fingers. So when I pull down, it'll actually pull out of my fingers right into place and trap that material in place. So I'll show you guys. Show you guys again. I needed to clean them up a little bit. So go ahead and put this down, trap it in place, bring it down, capture it in. All right, let me switch to the better camera so you can see that that's captured in place. I'll go ahead, wrap up just a bit, and I'll wrap back. And that's kind of good and good and captured. And then I'm actually going to bring my thread underneath and back down behind these eyes. I'm trying not to capture this this material. My, I'm trying to do my best not to capture it. 
because now I have to advance and finish tying in my chenille. So before that, I'm going to clean up a little bit. I've got a whole bunch of these fibers up by the eye of my hook. And I do want to uh, make that a little bit easier. Okay, that's better. It'll be a little scraggly, but that's all right. No big deal. Okay, so for this, I'm bringing my chenille in between the eyes, and I'm wrapping forward, and then I'm wrapping back, and I'm going to come back the other direction. So what that results in is where kind of in between the eyes gets nice and covered, and there's one gap left over here. And that allows me to come in the other direction, which is really hard to do and show you on video at the same time. So what I did was I came in and I filled the gap on the other side. Look, there, there's no set way that if you don't wrap this this exact way, then it won't work. That's not a thing. What we're looking for is just to make sure we've got coverage around those eyes, but that we haven't crowded this hook eye. And I've got to clear my hook eye a little bit because I do have some hair in it, but I'm going to show you how to do that at the end. Okay, so I'm going to invert my hook back over because I want you to see what I'm doing here. I'm going to go ahead and take my chenille and I'm going to capture it with my thread. I'm going to do about two, three wraps and that chenille is pretty well captured. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come in, I'm going to trim off the excess. So I want to be mindful of my, my uh, little guard hair. I don't want to uh, trap that down, but I do want to make sure that that chenille is kind of locked into place. And so that, that's pretty good. So you can see that that hair is still coming back at an angle. The legs are still coming off from the sides. Uh, everything's looking good, so we're ready to whip finish this fly. So we can go ahead, and I'm whipping behind the eyes. So that really helps protect this thread, locks it into place, and do three turns. If you want, you can put a little dab of super glue right here. And that'll go ahead on the next whip finish. Really helps solidify this knot. Um, kind of soaks into that chenille, makes sure everything's locked in place too. Three. I'll do a four turn on this one. So for those of you with red thread, what you may end up with is a little hot spot right behind the eyes. And I, I got to tell you, a little red hot spot on a fly is not a bad thing. In fact, there are a lot of flies specifically tied to have that hot spot. So using a red thread may actually be beneficial. I'm just trimming the, uh, the thread off. Um, and, and now my fly is tied, except of course, the issue is that the legs are, uh, are all together. So in order to get these legs to come apart, what we do is we come in and we pinch. This is gonna be really hard to see. See, I'm pinching these fly, uh, legs and I'm gonna pluck them apart. And that results in my, my three legs kind of being being separated. So that's what I'm doing. I'll do that on this one. It's a little bit higher resolution, so I'm coming. Just kind of plucking it with my fingers and they just come right apart. And that's how you separate them. So much easier than actually coming in and trying to peel these out individually. They just pop right off. And we've tied them in strong enough that they're not going to come out. And so now I can come in and, and adjust these if I need to, but for the most part, every single one of these legs is right in the way that I want them to be. So if I take a look at this, I can see now, blocking some of my light, um, that, uh, that you know these legs are, are apart from one another, but they're also in line, right? So it's kind of a neat effect when you uh, tie it in that way. 
And that's it, that's the critter bug. Super, super simple, super easy. You know, uh, not, not something that, that's overly complicated. Uh, something that, it, you know, if you weren't, you know, live streaming it and, and going through and going very slowly, uh, it would only take you, you know, five, ten minutes to tie. And uh, it's, it's just, um, it's a lesser known pattern uh, for, for smallmouth and for trout, but it should not be underrated. Uh, and, and what's interesting too is it looks very similar to some uh, go-to bass bugs that a lot of people have, right? There are a lot of little curly tail grubs that are out there and, and there are people that that's all they fish. And they'll fish that for crappie, they'll fish that for bass, you name it. And uh, this is a great imitation of that style of, uh, of lure. Uh, and is, is just very, very effective. And you can fish this, what you're gonna do is you fish this real slow, you know, off the bottom, just bounce it along the bottom. You can even dead drift it and let it bounce along. Uh, or you can be a little bit more aggressive and kind of have it swim and, and really let that curly tail uh, swim along, you know, so very retrieve and, and, and kind of play around with it and, you know, have some, some different practices. So we, uh, I could try to tie one really fast. Again, if you guys want to see this, you know, kind of more in real time, or um, you know, we can kind of stop here if you guys have any questions along the way. Uh, but I figure we got about you know about 15 minutes uh, remaining here because we try to do these for about an hour long. Um, so I wanted to to kind of give you guys a chance for for feedback. Like I said, you want me to to tie another one very fast just so you can see all the parts. I know a couple people kind of joined a little bit later, but of course this will be available. Uh, this will be something that you can see, uh, you know, after, uh, it, it takes a little bit, it takes a couple minutes for it to go up live, or uh, the, the recording to go up. But, uh, but yeah, let me know. You want to see another one, I can tell one real quick, or, um, you know, if you have any questions, let me know. Oh, and always, you know, if you guys, you know, even if you don't tie with a curly tail, like I said, even if you use like a zonker strip or something like that, um, take a picture and let us, you know, send it over our way. If you don't have my contact information, uh, you can just leave a comment below and I'll, I'll reach out to you directly and I can send it to you. Um, so, uh, but I also think that you can, um, so, oh, I can give that email. So the, the email is vaflytying at gmail.com. That's the email associated with this YouTube. So if you send it there, I'll, I'll get it as well. Um, but for, for most of you, I know you have my direct email, uh, you know, through, through Healing Waters. And so you can, you can also send it over there. And, uh, you know, we're glad to, to post those up and, and share them. So, all right. Well, so John's having a, uh, a vote to see how fast this fly can be tied. So I'm not a speed tire, but uh, I will certainly give it a go. Uh, yeah, we can do that. We got a couple minutes. Why not? This will be fun. So let me grab a hook. I did not have a second hook out. Uh, actually, I don't have anything to show. That's all right. You get to see this completely from scratch. Don't grab a hook. Uh, by the way, in two weeks, because this month we're doing the uh, the you know second and fourth. Um, hang on one second, guys. I've got a battery about to die on me. Computer that I'm running the live stream off of suddenly said low battery <laughs> so that is a lesson learned right there guys so I told you every week we're trying something new all right so let's go ahead throw this in and let's get our, our tail next let's go ahead and tie this on so again I'll, I'll talk through this uh, pretty quickly so I'm kind of starting just up in front of the the hook point Coming back, cutting off my thread, coming back to, again, near that barb of that hook. Uh, I know that I want to trim this. You know, it's too long. 
So I kind of know that's where my tying point is. I know I want to trim it right about here, so I can just come in and trim that material off. Again, I'm going to tie it on its side. So doing you know two, three loose wraps allows me to make sure that that material gets trapped into place, but at the same time, enough that I can take my hands off so I can manipulate it around. Doing a couple tighter wraps now, and then to come back a little much firmer pressure, and that tail's locked in place. It's not going anywhere, and it's set in the direction that I want it. So next thing is chenille. Make sure I got a long enough section of chenille this time. Last time it was a little short. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in, strip off a little bit to expose the threads. Start capturing that in place. Okay, coming right up to my tie-in point. And now we're ready for those rubber legs. And because I have that sheet of three, I'm already ready to go. So I can put these in place, making sure it goes back to the inner bend of this tail. Doing one, two, three loose wraps, pull that back into place where it needs to be, pulling up with some pressure, fixing it when it rolls, there we go. good. Come back just a bit to where I originally tied them in. Legs take some concentration, let me tell you. Coming these across at a diagonal. Pulling on the upstroke. If they bend down like that, you can still, with enough pressure from your fingers, get them to come back up in place. And I'm really going to want to lock these in. These are starting to move on me. There we go. There we go. And of course, once that chenille gets in, they're not going anywhere. They're locked in solid. Marked the distance I need to trim for these. Trim it out. All right. Advance my thread forward. I happen to have memorized exactly the distance I need for my dumbbell eyes. I'll do these in the, uh, in the really cool black eyes. So I think that they're just nicer. Plus they have a little bit of chartreuse, and you know what they say, if it ain't chartreuse, so I might as well incorporate that a little bit in. Um, but again, I'm coming back one dumbbell eye length before I have that little bump, and then I know that's right where it's going to go. So I'm going to come back here, put in a good dab of super glue, really helps lock these eyes into place all said and done. One wrap, it ends up being two wraps to be honest around the shank of that barbell before it goes down onto the hook. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Come back around. This part you're not going to see as well. Blocking with my fingers. But if you remember before, what I was doing is I'm, I'm actually putting some tension on the dumbbell eyes to get them to come back straight. And so once I've done that, I'm going to come back underneath. I'm wrapping about ten wraps fully underneath those eyes again with some tension. Put about wrap back just slightly from there, ready for the forward set of legs. Pre-measuring how long I want these legs in place. One, two, three loose wraps. Can we get those? Let's undo them. I don't like how that that cinched down, it was pinching the leg strange. So I'm gonna do one, two, three loose wraps. Come back up. A lot more tension. Kind of getting those legs where I want them, flip back over for my diagonal, capture in. I'm actually wrapping with my left hand for my loose wraps. Let's get those in place, and I'll switch over to my right, two, three things of tension, and then kind of like I said before, I just want to trim these now just to get them out of my way. Trim those legs, 
another good time to, to kind of come in. I'm going to trim those too short. That's all right. Yeah, they, they don't look bad. Get them in place. A little bit more solid pressure, wrap back. And then I'm going to put a couple wraps in front so they're ready to go. All right, now we're ready for our chenille. And so, this time I'm going to cheat and use the rotary. So to use that, I'm putting a half hitch in. That's really critical. And I'm going to go ahead and use my bobbin holder. And that's going to allow me to really thread this in so much easier and not have to worry about fighting my, uh, my bobbin. So, you know, what you may have to do is do this careful. Um, just to kind of get the, the legs out of the way. So even with a rotary, this is still something that takes a little bit of time, but much, much faster and, and less frustration. So let me do that one manually. Again, coming up close to those legs, but not where I'm actually interfering with the angle that we uh, were careful to tie in. Let's come back to the tail and then wrapping forward. And noticing that I'm not worrying about putting one wrap touching another when I'm, I'm going back and coming forward. All I'm doing is adding volume. Middle section is super easy with a, a rotary. And now I'm ready to trap right behind those eyes. Convert my vise. And I'm ready to come back in with my thread. So yeah, rotary vices are just super handy. Um, especially if you're tying with chenille, you know, you're tying anything where you have lots of wraps. Uh, it's just something that I, I love. There's a, another pattern that we're gonna tie in August called the CK Baitfish. And a rotary vise makes your life so much easier for, for that, that pattern. Uh, Cause that, that pattern is, Definitely something that, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of the most effective flies, but uh, I'm gonna use um, calf tail for this one. Um, it, it's one of the most effective flies I have. It is my most effective saltwater pattern, period. Um, and is one of my most effective freshwater patterns. And so we're gonna, we're gonna tie that one in August. Uh, and um, for that one, the rotary vise is so easy. But, uh, but anyway, so the nice thing about calf tail is it's pretty much always at the length that you want it, or at least um, that's how mine is. Of course, I say that, I do have to trim this one slightly. I think my scissors will trim. So I'm going to come in with my thread, pinch it, pull it down to trap those in place. Um, calf tail is a lot slipperier, or a lot more slippery. Uh, so you really have to make sure you've got some good thread tension and that you're actually capturing it. Let's see if I missed any. Oh no, I didn't. I, I did good. So I'm going to go ahead and get my thread back in place. And I'll even do one insurance wrap up over top that bundle. Alright, so we're, we're back ready for our chenille. Um, so I'm going to come... I usually like to have my vise inverted for this, or not inverted, but, but actually regular. So I'm going to flip over, put a wrap forward, two wraps coming back. Allows me to then see where I'm at for these, these eyes. And I'll actually come in and put wraps around each eye. And I'll Give that a good tug to really make sure that that's, that's kind of in place. And now I'm ready to two, three, four. That's pretty good. Chenille is captured. And we're ready for some super glue. So you can see, I mean, that was only a couple minutes, right? And that still had me pause once or twice just to kind 
kind of highlight a couple of things, um, but uh, but not a, uh, a a difficult lengthy fly to tie. So one, two, three, four. Ooh, five turn whip finish, just for fun. And um, that's not going anywhere, especially since I put that little dab of, of super glue in place. And the last thing that we need to do is our legs. Those are super fun. And one more. And that is, uh, is it. And there we go. So perfect, um, Perfectly in, in place, all those different legs. I just, I, I love that method of tying them in the three sheets together. It just, it works. And uh, super easy to, to get those legs in. I don't have to worry about tying those one at a time. Those, uh, if you haven't tried tying with the uh, rubber sheets of legs, you need to, um, to give that a try. Because it really does, when you're putting multiple legs in, it really does make it a lot easier. Uh, and, and especially, you know, when you, and I know the very first live stream we did was with the claw dad and that was, um, that, that, that fly, it's, it's almost required. So, all right, well, Hey, I hope, hope you guys learned something. Um, so, so yeah, Jonathan, you've got, you have my email, uh, for, um, that I always send out everything with healing waters. So feel free to send it to that email. And then, uh, you know, that way we can put them up on, on Facebook and show everyone, you know, the, the flies that you guys have been tying. That'd be fantastic. Um, but, uh, yeah, and, and again, for those of you watching who don't have that one, um, the, the channel, I think there's a way that you can actually send a message to the channel. You can send an email that way. That's flytying at gmail.com. So you can, you can send um, photos in. We would love to see photos from, from wherever you are. And if you're not in Healing Waters and you're watching these, fantastic. Tie along with us too, right? Look, we're all in this together. We're, we're all, you know, uh, in, in some form of quarantine. Some are, are more quarantined than others. So, you know, th these, these are in some ways for everyone. And, um, you know, feel free to, to join us. And uh, in, in two weeks, we will be back. Uh, we will be, I, I think, tying the critter mite, uh, which is actually the same hook, same tails. Um, but we'll, we'll confirm that. You'll see an email from me um, next week on that uh, once, uh, once Jeff actually gives me the thumbs up, thumbs down. And uh, we'll, we'll go from there. So anyway, hey, hope everyone is doing well. And we'll, we'll see you next time. Take care, guys.